NBC Sports presents the best of the National Football League, the American Football Conference. Today, from Schaefer Stadium, it's the Buffalo Bills versus the New England Patriots. Today's game is brought to you by Dodge with the new six-passenger Dodge Aries K and the new Ram Tough Dodge pickups and vans. By Schlitz, the master brewer's brew. It's today's Schlitz. Go for it. By Alcoa, producer of energy-saving aluminum. And by the revolutionary new twin-action Norelco Rototrack Razor. Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And here's the situation. Buffalo is in to play the Patriots. If Buffalo wins today, they have their first Eastern Division title since the old AFL days back in 1966. If, however, New England should win today, also beat New Orleans next week, while Buffalo stumbles against San Francisco, it would be a tie, each club at 10 and 6. And New England would get the nod as the division titleist on the basis of better overall record within the division. Buffalo has won the toss. Mike Hubach kicks it off. Bounding down inside the 10-yard line. Troubles for the Bills. And out of bounds goes Curtis Brown at about the 2-yard line. So the Bills will start deep in their own territory. Bob Costas along with Gene Washington. And let's take a look at the Bills offense. Joe Cribbs with an even 1,000 yards rushing on the year. He had 118 and two touchdowns the last time these two clubs met back in October in Buffalo. The receivers, Jerry Butler, has 50 catches. Frank Lewis with 38, and Reuben Gant as the tight end. We'll also see a lot of Mike Bramer at tight end. And there is the offensive line. Conrad Dobler has been an inspirational force for them. Reggie McKenzie, the last link to that electric company team, which sprang O.J. Simpson for so many yards. Ken Jones, who many people are touting for the Pro Bowl this year. That offensive line has done a marvelous job. Ferguson has been sacked only 12 times this year. Lowest in the entire NFL. He was dumped for losses 43 times in 1979. He's been sacked only three times in the last eight weeks. Curtis Brown carries on first down, smack into the middle of the Patriot defense. Free safety Tim Fox came charging through and got in on the play. It's a 3-4 unit for the Patriots. Bishop, Hamilton, and Adams up front. Steve Nelson, their best linebacker, by far and away, he leads them in tackles this year. And the secondary, all number one draft choices. Claiborne and Haynes are the corners, Sanford and Fox are the safeties. And their fifth defensive back, Roland James, the rookie out of Tennessee, also is a number one pick. Back to Curtis Brown, he goes. And Brown barely to the four-yard line before being shoved back by inside linebacker Steve Nelson with help from Julius Adams, the right end. So now it will be third and long for Buffalo, and in situations like this, they've been going to the shotgun, Gene, but if so, Ferguson will take the snap in his own end zone. Well, I don't think they're in a position to go to the shotgun. I may be proven wrong, but I think that Chuck Knox is the kind of guy that he'll let his defense do their part. I think they'll do something fairly conservative, kick the ball away, and let his defense take over. New England couldn't ask for a better start. They're getting the breaks that Buffalo got in that first game. Third and eight from the four-yard line with 13.32 to play. Cribs trying to sweep from out of the end zone. He'll be short of the first down, and they'll have to punt from near their own goal line. So Curtis Brown had trouble handling Mike Kubach's opening kickoff. It put them in a hole at the two. They could not climb out of it. Let's watch Joe Cribs trying to sweep. As I mentioned before, I don't think they want to take any chances when they're down, backed up like this. Cribs is the kind of guy, though, if he gets out on a sweep and he gets a guy out in front and gets a little crease, he's capable of going all the way. I mentioned before that New England got the break early, the kind of breaks that Buffalo had got in their first meeting when they played in that game with almost hurricane conditions, when New England would punt and the ball would roll, roll all the way down. New England is really going to take out all stops today. They're going to have to do everything they can to establish something very early in this game. Greg Cater, the rookie from Tennessee, 12th round draft choice, boots it. 
It's fielded by Roland James, and James gets it back nearly to the 40-yard line of Buffalo, so the Pats are in great shape. Cater actually was a 10th round choice this year, and he's been kicking at an average of 38.5 for Buffalo. Matt Cavanaugh in place of the injured Steve Grogan. Grogan is in uniform, but bothered by a sore right knee. Vegas Ferguson and Don Calhoun are the backs, but New England uses seven different running backs at some time or another, so we'll see them all. Morgan and Jackson rank 1-2 in the NFL in average yards per catch, and Russ Francis, the great tight end, and there is their offensive line. All are veterans except the second-year man, Wheeler. Hanna, of course, a perennial all-pro. Lenkaitis, a 13-year man, is the center. Vegas Ferguson carries on first down, and Ferguson is to the 38-yard line of Buffalo. The Bills also play 3-4. Williams is their top sack man. Smurless, a Pro Bowl candidate at nose tackle. And Sherman White at the other side. Sanford, Haslett, Shane Nelson, and the ex-Ram Isaiah Robertson are the linebackers. Mario Clark and Charles Romes are the safeties. Steve Freeman, whose interception and touchdown return helped them to victory in overtime a week ago against the Rams. The strong safety, Bill Simpson, also a former Ram, the free safety. Back to throw is Kavanaugh, the former Pitt quarterback. And he swings it out to Don Calhoun. Calhoun moves inside the 35-yard line, close to a first down, but they'll be short of it. Jim Haslett makes the tackle. It'll be third and a long one. I spoke to Isaiah Robertson before the game, and I said, I said, Isaiah, what do, what do you guys have to do to win? Isaiah said, these guys are going to come out with screens, draws, reverses, long passes. He said, they don't, they don't have anything to lose. They're going to put the ball up, and this is the way it's starting out. But I think Buffalo recognizes that. The key is going to be how will they hold up? How will they respond to all these trick kinds of plays? Third down, and we'll call it two from the 33-yard line with 11.20 to play in the first quarter. Vegas Ferguson gets the call. Does he get two yards? Yes, and then some inside the 25-yard line. There's a flag down on the play. The safeties, Freeman and Simpson, combined on the tackle, and let's see what the call will be. Cal Lepore is the referee today, and there's the rest of his crew. It's against the Patriots. They'll walk back the other way. The initial indication is going to be holding against the Patriots. They're in very good field position before this penalty anyway, and that's the kind of thing that you don't want to happen. Holding, 81, offense, third down. Russ Francis was holding. It cost them 10, back to the 43. It's third down and 12. If the Patriots should lose today, they would not be mathematically eliminated, but they would be virtually eliminated, not only for the division title, but also a wild card spot. And now the Patriots go into the shotgun. Kavanaugh retreating back into Patriot territory, cocking once and twice and throwing, and he's got his man. Don Westbrook made the catch. Westbrook, who came in as the third wide receiver, took it inside Lucius Sanford, the outside linebacker, who made the stop but too late. They get the yardage they need. They pick up 21 and a first down. The important thing about this is look at the amount of time that Kavanaugh has to throw the ball. The Bills are only rushing three guys. He gets plenty of time. Gets his receiver right in between the zone. He takes a good shot when he catches it. But if they get the time to throw the ball, this guy has the, uh, has the arm to get it to his receivers. And Harold Jackson, a guy who hasn't been used very much in the past, is looking for a big game today. Jackson goes out wide to the right. They have two tight ends, Hasselback and Francis, in the lineup now. On first down from the 22-yard line, give it to Vegas Ferguson. Ferguson shedding tacklers, moving inside the 15, dragging people down to the 12. The rookie out of Notre Dame. Close to a first down. Let's see where they spot it. As you can see, he's been having the fine year, 655 yards. When you said shedding tackles, that's a good way to describe this young player. He doesn't have the blazing speed that some of the running backs in the NFL, but, but he has great agility, he has good leg strength, and the players on the team characterize him as a tough runner. And that's something that you don't think about when you think about a guy who has his quickness. But when he gets in there, he can really get the yardage. Second down and actually less than a yard to go for the first. No score, but the Patriots knocking on the door with Ferguson taking it outside for the first down. It'll be first and goal inside the 10-yard line. Fred Smurless, the nose tackle, makes the tackle. We're going to hear that name a lot today, Fred Smurless, playing in that middle of the nose tackle. The guy is very strong, tremendous strength, 
And he has the ability to take on that center or guard, whoever fires out after, neutralize the block, and then flow down the line of scrimmage either way. Matt Cavanaugh on the season has completed 60% of his passes, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Brogan, whom he replaced, had been hitting on 57% of his throws, 18 TDs, 22 picked off. In motion, it's Stanley Morgan. On the ground, Vegas Ferguson, touchdown! Went right through that hole and just sauntered into the end zone untouched. John Hanna and Sam Adams opened the hole up for him. What a hole that was. I think I could have gone through that hole, maybe even you, Bob. Let's take a look at this. These guys up front for the Pats are doing a super job. When Vegas gets this ball and cuts back, there's no one there. The middle linebackers were screened off very effectively, and he walked right into the end zone. Also, I have to give some credit to center Bill Lankaitis for his block. So with eight minutes and 48 seconds remaining, John Smith comes in to kick. Smith trying to add the point after touchdown. He's been perfect on 43 of 43, now 44 in a row on conversion tries for John Smith. So, after taking good field position on the punt, the Patriots take it home with 8.48 left. They lead it 7-0. You know, I love the fresh, clean smell of barley because I can almost taste the Schlitz beer I'm going to make from it. I'm Frank Selinger. Recently, I came to Schlitz as chief executive. Mostly, I check on the business end. But after 40 years as a master brewer, I checked the barley too, and the other fine grains to make a really smooth beer. Taste my Schlitz. We're gonna keep moving, moving on today. There are so many things that we can do with aluminum showing the way. We're gonna recycle, we're gonna innovate. We're moving on, now go again, wait. We can't wait. We're doing it now. We can't wait. We'll show you how. We can't wait for tomorrow. Vegas Ferguson, who scores his second touchdown running this season, he has been their leading rusher, but it's been Don Calhoun more often than not who's taken it into the end zone. Calhoun has scored eight touchdowns on the ground. Mike Kubach kicks off again, and Curtis Brown fields this one a step into the end zone and decides to bring it back. Curtis Brown, 15, 20, 22 or three yard line before going down. Gene, the last time these two teams met in Buffalo in October, the Bills dominated and won 31 to 13 and held the Patriots to just 39 yards rushing for the game. But on that last drive, the Pats moved the ball well on the ground with Ferguson. Well, they did, but I think what we're going to see, though, from the Pats is we're going to see the ball put in the air more today than they have in the last few games. When Grogan got injured, when he hurt his knees, it's like a baseball picture. Your strength comes from your legs, and he wasn't able to throw the ball effectively. They were 6-2 and two before he got injured. Now they know they have to get a good start. They're going to put the ball in the air in spite of the fact that they ran well in the initial goal. Long count from Ferguson, and flags fly before Joe Cribbs can take off. Cal Lepore will give us the indication. Illegal procedure against the Bills. It'll be first and 15 coming up. Bob, I think there's something interesting, even though the game is early, there's something interesting that's happening that I'm feeling it up here. The Buffalo Bills wanted to make sure that they had their concentration going. Wait till after this. False six. start, 72. Offense, first down. Ken Jones on the false start, Gene. Chuck Knox wanted to make sure that his team had their concentration going. They didn't allow anyone in the locker room before the game. What he was trying to avoid was things like that just happened. A false start. The guy bumbling the kickoff. They don't want that kind of thing in this game. Joe Cribbs back almost to the original line of scrimmage. Ray Claiborne from his left corner spot makes the tackle. The last time these teams met in October, Cribs had the best day of an outstanding rookie season, two touchdowns and 118 yards rushing. He came into this game with an even 1,000 yards on the ground, second in his conference to Earl Campbell of Houston. But if you go over to the NFC, he also trails the likes of Peyton, Sims, Anderson, and Dorsett. Three wide receivers are in. The lone running back is Curtis Brown. Second and 12. 
Ferguson dropping to throw with time and with a receiver. It's caught by Jerry Butler, his 51st catch of the season. Steve Nelson shoves him back. You see how many red shirts you saw on that ball? That's a good indication that these guys are really fired up. They're not allowing just one man to make the tackle. When the receiver catches that ball, you'll see these red shirts converge on the guy. Butler catches that ball. He knows they're coming, and he's trying to protect it. They got five, setting up third and seven. The inside linebackers in a 3-4 will always make more tackles than the other players, but Nelson's lead in tackles for the Patriots is most impressive. He is in on so many plays that inside linebacker or not, it's remarkable. The center of that defense and a guy that's surely headed for the Pro Bowl this year. James in as the fifth defensive back, motion along the line, flags fly out of the shotgun. Ferguson goes through with the play. The catch is not good, out of bounds, and let's see what the penalty will be. Butler caught the ball, but not in bounds. I think New England's going to be offside. I think they got a, got a little jump there. Tremendous catch on the part of Butler on the sideline. Ferguson was very cool. He stood back there, and he waited as long as he had to before he threw that ball. And here's a guy that's just been tremendous this year. Very consistent, very cool. A team needs a good quarterback. They're going to go all the way. In. And Ferguson can take this ball club all the way. Ferguson's numbers, 57% completions, 19 touchdowns, 18 have been picked off. Here's Cal Laporte. Right in. Defense, third down. Third down and two. So now it's third and two from the 31-yard line with seven minutes and two seconds to play in the first quarter. Joe Cribbs and Roosevelt Leakes are in. They give the ball to Cribbs. He needs two yards. He may not get it. Change of direction, and he's short of the stick unless they get a very charitable spot. There is also a flag down in the backfield. That was a late flag, and it was thrown in the area. Usually when it's in that area, it's holding against the offense. Face mask. Buffalo has a first down. Let's take a look at Cribs. He has been doing everything for this club this year. Watch how he cuts back. This is one of the things that he does so well. He gets the traffic flowing in one direction, and he has that ability, like O.J. Simpson had when he was at Buffalo, to be able to stop virtually on a dime and accelerate and come upfield, and he's able to get a gain out of something that could have very easily ended up being a loss. Defense, the first down. Mike Haynes grabbed the face mask. It's a first down. The ball placed at the 35-yard line. 6.56 to play, first quarter. There's Haynes, contract pulled out earlier in the season. Has come back to reclaim that right corner spot. In his fifth season, the first four campaigns saw him go to the Pro Bowl every time. Ferguson will throw on first down. Swings it out to Curtis Brown. Brown, 40-yard line, 42, a gain of seven. It'll be second and three. Steve Nelson again in on the play. Mike Hawkins was there to help him. Let's take a look at Steve Nelson in the middle. You mentioned before he's in on all the plays. He has a sense of where that ball is going to be. He's a student of the game. He knows what a football team is likely to do, and he has such agility and quickness that he's able to cover a lot of territory. The Bills are 10-4, and four and they have beaten the big clubs. They've beaten New England. They beat the Rams last week. They've beaten Pittsburgh. They are a victory away if they win here today. And down goes Ferguson on the sack, which is something that hasn't happened too frequently. Mike Hawkins came in from the outside linebacker spot and sacked him. That is only the 13th time all season that Ferguson has been sacked. Lowest total in the entire NFL, and he appears to be hurt on the play. When these teams played back in October in Buffalo, the Patriots did not get to Ferguson a single time. Backup quarterback Dan Minucci, number 11, Puts the helmet on and talks to Chuck Knox on the Buffalo sideline. Minucci in his second year out of Kansas State. That was a that was a broken play. You mentioned they hadn't been sacked much, but this was a broken play and he had no place to go. We'll have a report on Ferguson when we come back. 
When high interest rates keep America from buying the fuel-efficient cars it needs, it's time to do something about it. Starting now, when you buy a new U.S.-built 81 Chrysler, Plymouth, or Dodge passenger car on credit, you can deduct 6% from the sticker price, including options, because we think the interest rates are 6% too high. That number will move up or down depending on a significant change in the prime interest rate. Make your best deal, then get $325 to $1,000 direct from Chrysler. We'll help you buy the car you want. Well, set for a comfortable evening? I uh, hope so. Then you should be wearing comfortable slacks, like Hager Magic Stretch. All right. It's the Hager Expandomatic Waistband and Special Stretch Woven Fabric of today's day crime. Terrific. They won't squeeze your budget, either. In Hager Magic Stretch, you'll feel as good as you look. What more could a man ask for? You couldn't ask for more than Hager, especially for the holidays. It's highlights of the Ice Follies and Holiday on Ice, starring Peggy Fleming with your host, Tony Randall. The world's two greatest ice extravaganzas. Monday. They're taking Ferguson off. It looks like either a knee or an ankle. He may be able to come back, but it doesn't look good. This was obviously a broken play. He turned around. Let's take a look at our replay. We have a good shot from the end zone. He turned around to hand the ball off, and he saw that Cribb didn't want it. Now, I don't know who was at fault, but he didn't have any place to go, and you can see where his knee gets buckled under him. So now Dan Minucci comes in, and Minucci has been in on only one play from scrimmage all season long, and he has not thrown a pass all season. In a game that Buffalo needs to win to clinch the Eastern Division title, their first championship, it would be, since 1966 in the old AFL days. They have been a wild card playoff team before, the O.J. Simpson Club early in the 70s. Here's Cribbs trying to come outside and going absolutely nowhere in the clutches of Tony McGee. So now the Bills will have to punt again. Even though the Bills were in that shotgun formation, I don't think they wanted to put the ball in the air right away. They have Minucci in there. He hasn't thrown the ball to any of the receivers, only in practice. You come in this situation, you don't want to put the ball up right away. He's going to be in a tough situation. His receivers are used to having Ferguson throw the ball, and every quarterback is a little different. The pressure's going to be on them now. They may have to change their game plan a little bit. Greg Cater to kick. Back deep is Roland James, who ranks fourth behind Smith of Kansas City, Fuller of San Diego, and Bell of Pittsburgh in AFC punt returns. And this one goes squibbing off the foot and rolls down inside the 40. Actually, it could be worse, considering the roll that they got out of it. And the Patriots will have the ball around their own 37 or 38-yard line following a 29-yard punt by Greg Cater. So with 4.46 to play first quarter, the Patriots have the ball and the lead. Here's another Radio Shack Christmas gift idea. Soft, cuddly animals with a surprise inside. A radio. What a delightful gift. There's a raccoon, comic cat, brown spaniel, Pekingese, cuddly cat, and country mouse. It's a musical menagerie for kids and teens alike. The gift-priced, pettable, portable radios. Only at Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. One of these glasses is Slits, and one is Budweiser. Hi, I'm Tommy Bell. During the AFC playoffs, I'll be the referee to find out which beer is preferred, Budweiser or Slits, by 100 loyal Bud drinkers on live TV. How many Bud drinkers will pick today's slits? We won't know until the score goes up here, live during the halftime of the AFC playoffs. I'll call it like 100 Bud drinkers taste it. Budweiser versus today's slits in a live taste test. Back at Schaefer Stadium, Bob Costas along with Gene Washington. When they played in Buffalo a while back, things went the Bills' way. Early breaks to the Patriots here. Well, so far, that's the big difference. When they were up in up in Buffalo, the breaks were going for the Bills. Punch like that were going mm -hmm. the other way. New England has a, has a lead now. They're getting all the breaks. They're in good field position. If they score now, things are going to be very tough for Buffalo. It is do or die right now for the Patriots. They started out 6-1. and one. Since then... They've gone two and five, including very tough losses the last two weeks to San Francisco, and then this past Monday night at Miami. They lost a game that they still feel they should have won in overtime against the Dolphins. This has put their backs to the wall. Matt Cavanaugh with a fake and a drop and a pass on first down, down the right sideline, incomplete, and Stanley Morgan was all alone. Oh, as an ex-receiver, Gene, you've got a feel for that. You've got the defense beaten. 
and your man misses you. Well, you said it. he was wide open, and Stanley Morgan can run faster than anyone when he's out in that position. Kavanaugh put the ball up, and I wouldn't be surprised if the wind got it a little bit and it carried just a little too far. Cleveland at Minnesota in a game pitting divisional leaders. 10 and 4 Browns, 8 and 6 Vikings. Brian Seip to Calvin Hill. 18 yard touchdown pass, a 7 0 lead. Houston over Green Bay, 6 zip. Houston chasing Cleveland, a game behind them. Earl Campbell, a 1 yard touchdown run in that game, but they missed the point after. Bradshaw to Swan from 9 yards out in Pittsburgh, battling to stay alive at 8 and 6, hoping for a wild card, but they need help all around the league. They have a 7 0 lead at home against Kansas City. Vegas Ferguson, who has done yeoman duty in this first quarter. Carries on second and ten, and Jim Haslett drives him out of bounds. Atlanta playing at home, and will they ever lose? Bartkowski with a one-yard touchdown run and a 7-0 lead. New Orleans, will they ever win? 0-14, but 7-0 over the Jets. Don't get excited yet, Saints fans. Last week against San Francisco, they led 35-7. They lost in overtime. Three wide receivers, Morgan, Jackson, and Westbrook. Third and seven from the 41-yard line. Ferguson, the report on him, sprained left ankle. He heads for the Buffalo locker room. Kavanaugh from out of the shotgun. Dropping deep, swinging one out. Russ Francis has the catch and a first down. Into Buffalo territory before Isaiah Robertson stops it. Again, Bob, the key, I think, so far is the fact that Buffalo is not rushing more than their three down linemen. They're going to be content to sit back and try to cover. They don't want to give up anything cheap. Kavanaugh has plenty of time to throw. Therefore, his receivers can develop their routes. Russ Francis coming across underneath the coverage. He's so big that he can shield those guys away from the passes. Don Shula, last, after last week's game, said he's the best tight end in football. For Francis, his 36th catch of the season. He goes out. Don Hasselbeck comes in. Fake to Calhoun, give it to Ferguson again. Battles for about three to the 45-yard line. Jim Haslett tripped him up, number 55. Once again, here are the playoff possibilities, roughly, for New England. If they beat Buffalo and also win next week against New Orleans, and the Bills are beaten by San Francisco, the title belongs to the Patriots. If Buffalo wins today, they have clinched the title and virtually eliminated New England. If New England wins today and they both win next week, Buffalo gets the division, but New England, depending upon what other contenders do, could still get a wild card spot. But they almost have to win both of their remaining games. Stanley Morgan, the intended receiver, and Gene, I'm not so sure that play came off as they had hoped. Not exactly, but it's an indication of what they're trying to do. First of all, they fake the reverse to Morgan. They want to go with screens. We mentioned before that they want to go with some screens. They fake the reverse. Kavanaugh's faking it to him now. Comes back to the side. Now they're trying to get the ball over, over to Morgan where he can utilize his speed. We can't see it on the screen, but he had three blockers in front of him. The problem is that Kavanaugh didn't put that ball directly there. He laid it up a little bit, and it's windy down on the field, and that wind can carry that ball away as it did just then. Ron Earhart. Lived through a heartbreaker at the Orange Bowl on Monday night. Out of the shotgun and with three wide receivers in. Also look for Andy Johnson, number 32. He swings out of the backfield. He's their third down specialist. Kavanaugh tucks it in and runs. Kavanaugh has a first down. Matt Kavanaugh down the sideline. Gets out of bounds, avoids the hit, and the Patriots are still rolling. Isaiah Robertson is down. Is it Isaiah? Someone is down on the field from the Bills really seem to be in a lot of pain. But Matt Kavanaugh again dropping back the pass having lots of time to throw the ball not getting very much pressure his receivers get down feel they take the defensive backs the linebackers with them so when he breaks the line of scrimmage there's hardly anyone there to stop him no one touches him before he gains 20 yards or so. That's Jeff Nixon, who earlier in the season sat out several weeks with a knee injury. He is hurt again. We'll have a report on him when we come back after this timeout. It takes a lot of people to put this paper on the street. A few key people make sure it's one of the best around. 
To protect his key people, the publisher chose one of the Hartford's business life insurance plans, a tax-saving plan with important benefits during working years and for retirement. Don't your key people deserve the same coverage? To protect your business, home, auto, life, call an independent agent who represents the Hartford for a quote. The Hartford, let us protect your world. America's not going to be pushed around anymore. Dodge announces an historic breakthrough, the new Omni Miser with the highest highway mileage any American car has ever achieved. Miser squeezes out more gasoline mileage than Toyota Corona, more than Honda Accord, more than VW Rabbit, more than the world car four-door Ford Escort, and at a lower price, only $52.99. Omni Miser at your Dodge Ram dealer. Now Dodge fights high interest rates with 6% off all new 81 cars. Get $325 to $1,000 direct. Jeff Nixon was off to a marvelous start this season, then missed eight weeks with a knee injury, just recently reactivated, goes hobbling off after this last play. Let's look at it again. As I mentioned before, Buffalo wants to avoid a cheap touchdown from New England on reverses, screens, and all that sort of thing. As a result, they're playing conservative in their defense. The receivers have taken all of the linebackers and defensive backs down the field. Kavanaugh breaks that line of scrimmage. He runs down 25 yards or so, and there's no one to touch him. It may backfire. The, the theory or the defense that the Bills are using so far, being conservative, may backfire on situations just like this. Buffalo leads the entire NFL in team defense when it comes to fewest yards allowed. However, New England has moved the ball well on them in this first quarter. They lead it 7 to nothing. First and 10 from the 23 of Buffalo. A collision between Kavanaugh and Ferguson, and Ferguson gets two yards at most before going down. This telecast is presented by authority of the NFL. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the New England Patriots and the National Football League is prohibited. Second down and eight from the 21-yard line. Clock moving, two and a half minutes to play. Bob Costas with Gene Washington at Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Game time temperature, 33 degrees, but the wind chill, they tell us, minus 10. I was on the field before the game, and it's very cold, and that wind can have a tremendous effect on some of these passes. They get up a little too high. Kavanaugh on second down. It goes off the hand of Russ Francis and falls incomplete despite a diving attempt by Jim Haslett for the interception. When Kavanaugh threw that ball, Russ Francis was not expecting. He was just crossing the face of Isaiah Robertson. Let's take a look from the end zone angle. Francis is surprised by this ball. He's not ready for it just yet. Isaiah is right there in good position. And one thing about Buffalo, when you get down on their 20-yard line or so, they have stiffened up very well. They play a lot like Denver did when they went to the Super Bowl. They bend, but they don't break. Again, the shotgun. Three wide receivers in. The Patriots have converted three of three third-down situations in the first quarter. Kavanaugh is under pressure. He's rolling right. He is in big trouble. He is out of bounds. The difference that time, Bob, is that Buffalo changed up their coverage. Instead of just rushing the three-down linemen, I think they brought Lucius Sanford. We might see him come in on this, put a little more pressure on the quarterback, don't allow him the time to throw the ball. We see Sanford chasing him. Now they're getting that kind of defense that they need so that they can't allow the quarterback to take off and run for 20 yards or so. And I think we may continue to see them do this. They may start to bring the linebackers a little bit more. So now in comes John Smith. Smith for the season has hit 24 of 31 field goal attempts between 40 and 49 yards. He's three of six. This one is a 40 yarder. Kavanaugh for the hole at the 30. Smith with the kick. Long enough, but wide to the left and no good. John Smith is the NFL's active career leader. All active kickers among those with 100 or more field goals in their career. Smith is the accuracy leader, hitting almost 69%, but he misses this one wide to the left. I think by his expression, we'll be able to tell. We already know he missed it, but he's going to let everyone know. He's trying to give a little body English. Didn't work. I imagine that doesn't hurt nearly as much as the one that Bob Baumhauer blocked on the last play of regulation Monday night at the Orange Bowl. Well, what a difference that would make. Had that kick gone through the uprights, the whole playoff situation would be different for the Patriots. So Buffalo dodges a bullet. We have two reserve quarterbacks in. Manucci, however, by far the least...
least experienced of the two, and Minucci experiences a sack coming in on him. Ray Sugar Bear Hamilton to dump him. That's the second time a Buffalo quarterback has been sacked today. The first time, they not only got Ferguson for the loss, but knocked him out of the game with the injured ankle. Bob, I can sense that New England is really fired up. It's a feeling that you have. It's very difficult to describe. But when they get things going like they have going for them now, they get the breaks, the quarterback for the other team goes out, they get, they get more enthusiastic, and that's the result of what happens. So Minucci against Cavanaugh. With Grogan and Ferguson sideline. They lost 11 on the sack. Second and 21. They call on Curtis Brown, and Brown lowers his head and pulls out near the 20-yard line. Tony McGee, number 78, makes the stop. Well, Buck. Next Saturday, start your day with NFL 80 and host Bryant Gumbel bringing you all the inside news on the climactic final weekend of the regular season, plus a special feature on the sounds of football. Then stay tuned for a unique treatment of the game between the Jets and the Miami Dolphins from the Orange Bowl. I guess you and I will not be uh, called upon to broadcast <laughs> that particular game. Immediately following its college basketball as the Indiana Hoosiers meet the North Carolina Tar Heels all here on NBC Sports. We will use announcers for the basketball game. Minucci to the sideline and the catch is made by Roland Hooks. And Hooks has a first down for Buffalo before being shoved out. It's an excellent throw and an even better catch on the part of Roland Hooks. He caught that ball and he had to be like one of the best catchers in, in baseball because someone on the, on the New England Pats took a swipe at that ball there. As a receiver, that's a very disconcerting thing to have happen. You have your eyes on that football and somebody weighs in front of it. And to be able to catch that ball in that situation, especially for a running back, is a tremendous job. Hooks to the sideline after making the catch. The sixth-year man out of North Carolina State. Brown and Cribs are now the running backs. Butler and Lewis, the wide receivers. 43 seconds to play first quarter, trailing 7-0 from their own 41. They give it to Brown, and Brown gets one grudging yard at most before Mike Hawkins stops him, number 59. One thing, if you look at a Chuck Knox football team, when he was out in Los Angeles and had the Rams, I think he was there five years, and I was in San Francisco, we just couldn't beat those guys. I think we might have beaten them once. But his teams can be characterized as being consistent football teams. They're in a situation now where their starting quarterback is out. But I think that you will continue to see the consistent play, particularly in that offensive line. They don't do a lot of fancy things. They don't get a lot of yards per carry. But when the game ends, they end up with lots of yards and lots of time and of possession on offense. The gun goes off, and that is the end of the first quarter. When we come back, Buffalo ball from their 42, second and nine after 15 minutes, seven zip Patriots. Got it. Open up. Finish. And taste the moment. We're just beginning. This time, the best Five is just an hour. Okay, deserve. let's make it official. You brought out the best? It's on me. It's on us. It's time for Erlanger. One look, one sip, one taste will tell you this beer is a classic. Now we're really in business. Come and taste the moment, Erlanger. We're Exxon. We're Hal Siegel, who's managing a $900 million program to produce oil and gas this year. We're Jack Clements, whose seismic crew is seeking hidden oil and gas in a Texas marsh. We're Dean Black, working to bring an old oil field back to life in Illinois. We're Herman Hillis, drilling deep beneath Louisiana for natural gas. We're Joan Williams, in charge of a $19 million oil project in West Texas. We're more than 100,000 people working on energy. We're Exxon. I'm not very good at this, but here. It's the thrill that you feel when your dreams become real. It's the look in her eyes when she's caught by surprise. Like the moment you met that you'll never forget. Christmas is over. When you give diamonds, you get so much in return. Honey. Make the magic last forever. Joe Ferguson is back, Gene, but obviously hobbling around. I don't think there's any chance that he's going to come back and play. His ankle has hurt so much that I don't think he could be effective at all. I think what he has a hope for is that they're going to win today. He can get his treatment during the week and come back next week to play. 
Patriots dominating most of the first quarter stats. And on the scoreboard, they lead 7-0. The burden on the youngster, Dan Minucci. A flag is down as he swings it out to Joe Cribbs, and it falls incomplete. Throw it in the area where it's usually holding against the offensive line. Cribbs came into today's game with 1,000 yards rushing, 38 receptions on the season, second-round pick out of Auburn. And a lot of people are now wondering, how did he last as long as he did in the draft? Well, sometimes you, you get a guy who plays better once he gets into a situation where he's playing with better athletes. The guy is a tremendous athlete, no question about that. Nine, offense, second down. Conrad Dobler holding on the play, and Ferguson is going off again. He was all ready to the locker room once, came back out, apparently to try and convince the coaches that he was ready to give it a go, but they weren't buying that. I think he's going in to take a shower and get warm because there's no chance that he's going to play anymore today. You know who Cribs reminds me of a little bit? Terry Metcalf in terms of the things he can do. The way he carries the ball, a pass receiver, and also can run back kicks and punts. They're similar in size as well. Minucci dropping back on second and 19. This is Cribs who gathers it in, moves across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Bob Golick and Steve Nelson, pair of linebackers, combined to stop him. Another interesting statistic about Joe Cribbs is that his longest run from scrimmage, I believe, is 21 yards. And a guy that has 1,000 yards, you would think would have broken one for 45 or 60 or so. But I think that's sort of indicative of the style of football that Chuck Knox plays, which is possession football, and that's the way everything is designed. We may not get big gainers, but we're going to get a lot of small ones. Cribbs has scored 12 touchdowns this year. Second in the entire league behind another rookie, Billy Sims of Detroit. The Lion Prize has 14 scores. Third and 15 from the 36. With hooks and cribs as the backs, Minucci steps up and throws, and his bullet is gathered in by Jerry Butler. Butler running laterally may not have the first down. I don't know if he realized, Gene, where the stick was. They got 14 yards on the play, and if Butler had simply lunged forward and gone down after catching it, he would have had what he needed, but he ran laterally and comes up short by a yard. He's a tremendous athlete. He gets into the middle, and watch how he jumps to catch this ball. A lot of people at home may wonder, why does the receiver jump when he only has to put his hands up? You do this because when you catch that ball, and if someone's there and hits you at the same time, you're braced, and you can hold on to it. I think you had it right. He didn't know exactly where the stick was. Otherwise, he would have turned up and gotten the first down right away. But I think he had a chance, or he felt he had a chance, to come across field and break it for a longer game. Well, this has been a demolition derby so far. That's Julius Adams, who is down on the field. We'll come back with the Bills preparing to punt after this. Reaching your financial goal is never as simple as some people would have you believe. You have to know exactly where you're going and make the right decisions at the right time. At Merrill Lynch, it's our skill at guiding you through the intricacies of investing that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and to yours. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Season's greetings from the Denny's family to yours. It's the all-new Osmond Family Christmas Show, starring Donnie and Marie with guests Greg Evigan, Doug Henning, and Peggy Fleming. Merry Christmas! Monday. Julius Adams went off under his own power, apparently just shaken up on the play. And now with fourth and one and the ball at midfield, and 13 minutes and 44 seconds to play in the first half, Greg Cater is in, and Roland James is back to field his punt. Cater kicked one 42 yards the first time he played. The last one went off the side of his foot, and he was lucky to get 27 yards out of it with the roll. James standing at his own 10-yard line. They've only got three seconds to snap this. Maybe they want to take the penalty to give him more room to go for the coffin corner. I don't think it was intentional. It's going to cost them five either way. They were trying to change things around a bit. 
trying to kick the ball away to get it to the farthest side of the field over there. They didn't want to take that penalty. It's just worked out that way. It's another example Delay. of what I've talked about before. Offense. Down. Maybe they're trying too hard to have their concentration go the right way, and it just seems to be having the opposite effect. Cater came into the game averaging 38.5. 14 of his kicks have gone for touchbacks. He's put 12 inside the 20. That's what he's aiming to do right now, but it's going to come up way short of that. It's fielded by Roland James. James trying to come left, reverses his field, and down he goes at the 20-yard line. A 36-yard kick by Cater. No return from James. 13-33 on the clock at Schaefer Stadium. Patriots with the 7-0 lead and the ball back at their 20. Introducing the revolutionary twin action shaving system engineered to outperform twin blades. The new Norelco Rotatract Razor. Inside three floating heads, Rotatract works like twin blades to grip hair. Raise it up, then razor it off hundreds of times a second for a shave that's twin blade close without a nick or cut. The new twin action Norelco Rotatract Razor. Cord and rechargeable. Twin blade closeness, but no gotcha. Ram Tough, the XM1 tank, America's newest battle ram. Ram Tough Dodge, America's new full-size pickup. Like the XM1 tank, designed and built by Chrysler, with Ram Tough carbon steel frames, seven steel cross members, more than Ford or Chevy. XM1 tank, Dodge trucks, built by Chrysler for America's toughest jobs. Dodge trucks are Ram Tough. Dodge Ram 150 pickup prices start at $59.97. This is Brian Gumbel in New York at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. The Oilers have moved ahead of the Packers. Rob Carpenter on a 46-yard dash. He pushed out at the one from there. Earl Campbell takes it over, but Chester Markle missed the point after. So the Oilers lead the Packers 6-0. Let's go back to Foxborough. Okay, thanks, Brian. Patriots preparing to put it in play. Matt Cavanaugh is 3 of 6 so far for 37 yards in Stanley Morgan and Harold Jackson. He has two great wide receivers. They don't rank that high in the NFL in total catches. But they are 1-2, Morgan first and Jackson second, in average yards per catch, both averaging better than 20 yards per reception. They keep it on the ground with Vegas Ferguson, who has been carrying the load for them in this first half, picking up four yards out to the 24. Gene, we mentioned Morgan and Jackson. When these teams met in Buffalo in October, the Bills' defense held each to just one catch. Well, I think the significant thing about what's happened with Stanley Morgan and Harold Jackson is that you have two of the fastest, truly the fastest wide receivers in football. And for the last four or five weeks, these guys have really not been utilized. That's something I'd like to come back to a little later. Jackson goes to the sidelines. Two tight ends in. Hasselbeck joining Francis. Hasselbeck good enough to start for most clubs. Mosi Tatuku, who wears number 30, has replaced Don Calhoun. But it's Vegas Ferguson again who carries across the 30-yard line for the first down before Jim Haslett makes the tackle. 12.40 to play. Second quarter. And Kavanaugh has moved the Patriots well in the first half. First down for the Patriots. Let's take a look. Fred Smurlis, the center of that Buffalo Bill defense, really gets a shot this time and gets neutralized. The result is, is that the Pats come up with a good gain. And you mentioned that number 30, Tatupu, was in there, and they put him in for his good blocking ability. And he went in there and did a job that time. Interior line play thus far has been a reversal from the meeting in Buffalo. The Patriots have sacked Buffalo quarterbacks twice. They never got to Ferguson when they played in October. And here is Tatupu carrying. Outside, straight arming his man, Charles Rome. There's a flag down on the play as he moves across the 35. Now let's see who they call this against. Isaiah Robertson pleading his case. Chuck Knox also unhappy. That indicates it's against Buffalo. Face mask, as I thought. <laughs> Knox, is, Knox is obviously upset. I think what he's saying is that one of the linemen for the Pats was holding one of his defensive players. Personal he's usually foul, a cool face mask, 26, defense, first down. Charles Rome's not only took a straight arm from Tatupu and was rolled over, but he gets hit with a penalty. I like that little act by Knox. That was very theatrical. You know, 
what happens in that situation if your defensive back running back comes out there and straight arms you you're trying to grab him you grab the first thing you can unfortunately it was a face mask but you can't blame Rome they get a first down at the 41 and Ferguson gets a couple of yards before being stopped in addition we were talking about the interior line play before in addition to their work defensively getting two sacks the offensive line of the Patriots obviously is springing their running game much better than they did in Buffalo a couple of months ago when they gained only 39 yards on the ground for the entire game in this first half alone Ferguson has carried 10 times for 47 well there's one person on that offensive line number 74 for the Pats Shelby Jordan who is just having a great year the most improved offensive lineman from last season and largely responsible for their success out there today and, just, and a guy who may be in the Pro Bowl this year too. They're going to run Ferguson here till he drops. That's his 11th carry. And it will leave them with third down and three. This gives us a chance to get back to this issue of, of Harold Jackson and Stanley Morgan, two guys who've been tremendous wide receivers and have been, in my opinion, underutilized in the last three or four weeks. But I think there's a very good reason for it. When their quarterback went down with the injury, came in with a new quarterback, Kavanaugh came in. He wasn't able to get the ball to these guys the way they had been in the past. Therefore, they tried to be more conservative and run the ball more. There's Francis in motion. Rufus Bess is in as the nickelback for Buffalo. Now that Jeff Nixon has been hurt, Kavanaugh throws on third down, and it's intercepted. Bill Simpson picks it off. Simpson is back to midfield for Buffalo. The Bills are now plus six for the season on the giveaway takeaway table. The Patriots are minus three, a 13-yard return after the interception by Simpson. I saw Bill Simpson do this too many times out in Los Angeles when he was playing against my team, San Francisco. This guy reads very well. It looks like the pass was thrown to him because he reads that quarterback so well. He doesn't have the speed that he once had, but he still has great anticipation, a great athlete, and this is a result of tremendous play on the part of Bill Simpson. Jackson was the intended receiver. It never got there. Buffalo has a chance to get back in it. America's truly great beers have always been rich and pure, brewed solely for taste. A part of this tradition lives on in a beer called Erlanger, a beer of exceptional quality. It's brewed so skillfully with such choice ingredients that just one look, one sip, one taste will tell you here is a classic. Erlanger, keeping the great moments of brewing tradition alive for you. College basketball is off to a flying start as America's most exciting premier point guard, Isaiah Thomas and the Hoosiers of Indiana, take on the North Carolina Tar Heels Saturday on NBC. For Simpson, that was his fourth interception of the year. In the 23rd pass, the Bills have picked off as a team this season. From midfield, Dan Minucci, who has hit three of three for 40 yards in relief of the injured Joe Ferguson, goes back to work. His club trails at 7 0, 10 38 to play second quarter. Sunny but very cold, Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough. Curtis Brown grinding out some yardage before Rod Schote makes the tackle. He got about seven on the play, second and three coming up. Cleveland with a 7 0 lead that's now in the second quarter at Minnesota. Houston into the second quarter with Green Bay and a 6 0 lead on the floundering Packers. Pittsburgh. A glimmer of a chance remains for Chuck Knowles Club, 7-0 over Kansas City. Cardinals in Philly, scoreless at Veterans Stadium. Second and three yards to go. Joe Cribs trying to sweep, blockers in front of him. But nothing. They lose yardage on the play. Conrad Dobler got out in front of him, but Steve Nelson broke it down and made the tackle. New England defense continues to play enthusiastic football. Steve Nelson, number 57, continued to lead the way. 
And that's one of the things about a 3-4 defense. It's very difficult to run wide against a 3-4 because that's why they have four linebackers back there, guys that have good agility, and they want to be able to take away any, any pursuit angles and they've done it very well, and they're doing a tremendous job today. This New England ball club is very fired up, and you can feel it up here in the booth. They set up shotgun on third and four. Actually, it's closer to five yards to go. Manucci. Scrambling right. Got to get to the 40. He's there and then some. Across the 30-yard line and out of bounds. A first down for Buffalo. The thing about that, it looks like it's like deja vu. I think we've seen that before. Except it was the other team carrying the ball. We see the rush. He's dropping back. He gets a good rush. He gets outside. And I tell you, he has good speed. He looks like a halfback running down the sideline. 17-yard pickup and a Buffalo first down. But you can tell he's a quarterback. He's smart enough to run out of bounds before he gets hit. 9.07 remaining. What an opportunity for Manucci. With Ferguson injured, he could be at the helm in a division-clinching game for the Bills. A win today, and the title is theirs in the AFC East. Fake to Cribs. Off play action. Manucci is in trouble. There's the third New England sack of the day. And for the season, the Patriots now have 38 sacks. Julius Adams, who was shaken up earlier but has returned to the Patriot lineup, brought him down for the big loss. And let's look at it again. Julius Adams leads the club in sacks. He gets a little help from Rod Schott on the outside. They're blitzing the outside backer coming from that short side, the blind side of the quarterback. They put tremendous pressure, get them back for a nice loss, move them further back from that end zone. Ball back near the 39-yard line, loss of 11, second and 21 coming up. Clock moving, 8.45 to play second quarter. The Patriots on the Vegas-Ferguson touchdown run lead it 7 to nothing. Butler and Lewis are the wide receivers. Prince trying to sweep, might throw off Vitt. Dipsy Do comes back to Minucci. Now, this is the lateral. Minucci has to pick it up, and he falls down near the 50, then loses the football, but it goes out of bounds. So it still belongs to Buffalo. Minucci had the presence of mind, at least, to pursue the ball because it was a lateral after Cripps threw it backwards. He sure did. But this is something you might expect to see from the Pats, not from Buffalo, who's been playing fairly conservative football to pull one out like this. If it had worked, it would have been a great call. Let's I'll tell you something I'd expect to see from the bad news Bears, considering the way it came off. The guy who was responsible for that play not working was 85, Julius Adams. He hustled all the way over there and put his hands up in front of Joe Cribbs, who may be giving away about six inches in height, and now he knows what it's like to be a quarterback to throw that ball with a big defensive lineman barreling down on you. Third and a long city block for the first down as we look at Julius Adams. Out of the shotgun, they need 28 yards. Manucci cranks it up, throws it incomplete, and a good Buffalo opportunity has gone by the boards, and Greg Cater will punt for the fourth time in this first half. New England came with their four-man rush, didn't give Manucci long to throw the ball, Tried to get it to Hooks, but had it too far out in front. Roland Hooks had no chance to catch it. Roland James again retreats to his own 10-yard line. Great Cater. Rookie out of Tennessee Chattanooga. The kick. Tenth round draft choice this year. Placed Rusty Jackson this season as the Buffalo punter. Gets off a highway. And into the end zone it goes for the touchback. It's a 45-yard punt for the touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. We have 8 minutes and 13 seconds to play second quarter. Patriots with the ball, and they still have the 7-0 lead. Clint and Clyde are back in any which way you can. Taking on bikers and buffoons, gangsters and goons, and some very attractive young ladies. It's a rip-tickling, thigh-slapping, belly-whopping punch-out of a good time. See Clint Eastwood and the whole Every Which Way But Loose gang in any which way you can. Rated PG. It'll knock you out. Opens Wednesday, December 17th. Check newspaper for local listing. Is the Energizer just another battery? Is Christmas just another day? 
the energizer from EverReady Technology. Of all leading brands, nothing outlasts, nothing outperforms the energizer. Switch to the energizer and keep your gifts running long. Photo flash, calculator, toy, they'll tell you. Energize me. The energizer, energize for life. Long life. NBC is going to bowl you over starting December 26th as Arch Leister leaves Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl. New Year's Day is the Rose Bowl, followed by the primetime pageantry of the Orange Bowl. Sunny skies over Schaefer Stadium, but it's awfully cold. The wind chill down below zero. A moment ago, the fans here were up on their feet and cheering as Stanley Morgan and Harold Jackson led the cheers, exhorting the crowd to get behind the Patriots. Jackson has been an inspirational force on this New England club in his 13th year out of Jackson State. Despite his diminutive size, 5'10 and 175, he has never missed an NFL game playing in his 175th in a row this afternoon. Ferguson trying to come outside. Vegas Ferguson stutter-stepping for a gain of three to the 23. Jim Haslett, the tackler. New England went with a two tight end offense that time, bringing Stanley Morgan out. Let's take a look. Haslett flowing down the line of scrimmage. Look at the speed. He has tremendous speed for a linebacker. All linebackers in a 3-4 should have good, good quickness, but he has exceptional speed, and we got a good shot of it there. He's accelerated and made the tackle. Kavanaugh breaks the huddle, with Morgan coming wide right and Jackson wide to the left. Morgan has caught six touchdown passes this year, but five of them came in the Pats' first four games. He's had only one scoring catch in the last ten. Ferguson again. Ferguson out across the 25, leaving them with third down and about four as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. WBAL-TV, Channel 11 in Baltimore. Bob Costas and Gene Washington in Foxborough, Massachusetts. New England up over Buffalo in a do-or-die situation for the Pats. 7-0. Matt Cavanaugh has been the New England quarterback from the outset. A week ago, he also played, actually Monday night, against Miami, completing 12 of 16 in relief of the injured Steve Grogan, who's bothered by a knee problem. Joe Ferguson, the Buffalo starter, hurt his ankle early in the game. Dan Minucci has replaced him. Kavanaugh's pass juggled and then caught. And Russo catches for a first down at the 35. Russ Francis, a very big target, utilizes that great size. He's a savvy guy. You look at the move. He's trying to get away. He breaks clear. Takes his eye off the ball just a little bit, but has time to reach back and get it. When you have two wide receivers on the outside with the speed that, that, ha that they have, this enables Francis to maneuver in that middle. So if the defensive club wants to try to double both guys on the outside, that leaves it wide open for Russ Francis in the middle. And we may see them going to him more in the middle because they have such speed on the outside. First and 10 from the 35 with 6.40 left. Don Calhoun, his first carry of the day, four yards to the 39-yard line. Bill Simpson, who made the interception earlier, is in on the tackle. Lucius Sanford there as well. I love it when he runs with the football. The first time I was here and he ran with the ball, he had a positive gain, and I thought the fans were booing. But what they're saying is, whoo, whoo, whoo. It's great. Long-time backup to Sam Bam Cunningham, and Cunningham not signed this season after a contract dispute. Calhoun gets a chance to start. Hasselbeck and Francis are both in, both on the right side, and a two tight end set. Second and six, Kavanaugh fakes, then swings outside. Stanley Morgan. Morgan driven out of bounds. Near the 45-yard line, close to a first down. That's a play they frequently use, trying to get Morgan, the speedster, a little bit of room to run. Well, he certainly has the speed to break it from any place on the field, but this is the kind of play that the Bills are looking for. As soon as it was there, they had people flowing. They get a gain, they get the first down, but they don't get the big gain that they were looking for. Thursday at 8 Eastern time, games people play with the finals of the three-ton tug of war, where you'll see the New Orleans firemen battle the steel workers from Pittsburgh. Then a fun look at the world's shortest pro basketball team, led by Billy Barty, and an inspiring visit with marathoner Peter Stredwick, plus much, much more on Games People Play, Thursday at 8 Eastern Time on NBC. Kavanaugh's 5 of 9 for 52 yards so far in the first half. 5.50 to play until halftime. Ferguson in trouble. Turns it into a good game. Across midfield to the 48, he made 7 yards almost entirely on his own. He 
had John Hanna out in front, but Hanna was tripped up, fell down. Vegas and Ferguson, sorry, Vegas Ferguson just stepped over him, got a positive gain on his own. Let's take a look from the end zone. The linebackers are converging. They're getting their good direction. They're flowing well. But Ferguson, he mentioned before, he has a good ability to cut back. He has good leg strength. And he knows how to get positive yardage. When he sees an opening, he goes right for it, and he takes that positive gain right away. 14 carries for 63 yards for Vegas Ferguson, and they call his number again. He is close to a first down near the 45-yard line of Buffalo. Might be close enough to measure. The officials are calling timeout. Fred Smurless, the nose tackle, tripped him up. Whenever you see a running back getting gains like that where he gets the football, no one touches him before he's two yards or so beyond the line of scrimmage, that means you're getting a tremendous effort from that offensive line. Sam Adams, Shelby Gordon, Jordan, John Hanna, Dwight Wheeler, all these guys are doing a tremendous job. You can look at the expression on Knox's face. He's not very happy about the results so far. Ferguson gets a brief rest. Horace Ivory comes in to replace him. Ferguson has had one game of 100 yards this year. He had exactly 100 three weeks ago against the Colts. He came into this game with 655 for the season, averaging 3.7 per carry. Might be on his way to a 100-yard day today. Horace Ivory carries, and the fourth-year man from Oklahoma gets two, maybe three, on first down. The clock moving, four minutes and 20 seconds to play second quarter. And the Patriots, who scored on their first drive, after they took over on the 40-yard line of Buffalo, the Bills had to punt from out of their own end zone after the game's first possession. Still have that 7 nothing lead. The Patriots have the lead, but they may be doing something. They may be making a, a mistake in my mind. It looks as though they're willing to sit on this lead. They're the kind of ball club that can explode. They can get a 21-point lead, not a 7-point lead, but they're going with a two tight end offense, and it looks like they're willing to sit on it. Kavanaugh. Swings it out to Horace Ivory. Ivory has another first down. Inside the 35-yard line, Steve Freeman, the strong safety on the tackle. As soon as I say they're going to sit on their lead, they put the ball in the air. <laughs> Let's take a look at the replay. He's dropping back. He continues to get lots of time to throw the ball. Ivory comes underneath the coverage. The linebackers in their deep drops. Turns upfield, gets a nice gain. Let's see what they do from this point on. This is a good place to continue to throw the ball because the end zone is not working against you. Your receivers have time or an area to, to run. When you get closer down there, those defensive backs will use that end zone as a help to them because they know the guy can't go too far deep. Calhoun. Barely back to the line of scrimmage, if that. Nothing but white shirts around him as the Bills converge on the play. Led by Jim Haslam. Patriots 8-6 and six overall. Here at Schaefer Stadium, 5-2. and two. Away from home, 3-3. Three and three. Patriots may be looking at it this way, Gene. The weather conditions will not get much better. It looks like a pretty day. It is a pretty day, but it's not that comfortable. It's very cold, and it's windy. Dan Minucci, for all practical purposes, a rookie, is in at quarterback in place of the injured Joe Ferguson. They go up by a couple of touchdowns by halftime. They're in good shape. Kavanaugh, a wobbler. Francis almost held on, but couldn't. Francis almost came up with it, even though he had to come back three or four yards to try to make the catch. I'm not exactly sure why that ball came out of there looking like a dead duck. Maybe it slipped. It's cold down there. And sometimes it's tough to get a grip, grip on the ball, even for the quarterback. Francis almost makes a super catch. Just can't quite make it. So it's going to be third and 10 from just outside the 32-yard line. There's Harold Jackson alongside Francis. Jackson for the season has caught 32 passes, but only nine of those receptions have come during the last seven weeks. So Jackson and Morgan have not been quite as potent the past couple of months as they were during the first half of the season. Kavanaugh from the shotgun, they need 10 yards. He scrambled for a first down earlier. He tucks this one in and goes out of bounds, and they are way short of what they need. Ben Williams was chasing him. Williams is Buffalo's best pass rusher, leading them in sacks. Let's take a look at the pressure. Number 77, Ben Williams, is coming in there. He has put tremendous pressure on the quarterback, but you also saw a shot of 83, Sherman White, and he's a guy that forces 
quarterback to come out of the pocket. It's kind of interesting. Matt's trying to fake that guy out. He's like he has, still has a chance to throw the ball, but he knows he's not going to throw it. And the best thing to do is to get out of bounds and try to get out before someone hurts you. Fourth and eight from the 30. And they will go for it. It would be a 47-yard attempt if they had gone for the John Smith field goal. The longest he has ever kicked was 49. Instead, they go for the first. They need eight yards. Kavanaugh has those eight yards. Russ Francis, 10, five-yard line, first and goal. A daring maneuver by Ron Earhart. A 25-yard pickup. Take a look at the replay. The reason that Russ Francis is able to get open is that the Buffalo defense has double covered both guys on the outside. Therefore, the only people that can cover Russ Francis are the linebackers, Lucius Sanford and Shane Nelson. They just can't stay up with him. We have reached the two-minute warning. The Patriots lead 7-0, and they're knocking on the door first and goal. I didn't think you could improve on a Kodak pocket camera. Until I use one of the unique new Kodak cameras with built-in electronic sensor light flash. It turns itself on and automatically flashes whenever you need more light. It even turns itself off. You'll never worry about a flash again. A new extra light camera with sensor light flash. A great way to wrap up Christmas gift giving. I trust my stories to cameras and film from Kodak. America's storyteller. The Hartford found the real danger at a southeastern oceanarium lurking here, the busy highway separating the oceanarium from the parking lot. A loss prevention study that came with the Hartford's comprehensive business insurance policy recommended changes that help prevent accidents. To protect your business, home, auto, or life, call an independent agent who represents the Hartford for a quote. The Hartford, let us protect your world. The Patriots and Coach Ron Earhart have been stung in recent weeks by press criticism in the Boston area. One writer called them a group of losers. Another has criticized Earhart for being too conservative. They weren't conservative that time, going for it on fourth and eight. And they look like anything but losers against their top competition in the AFC East so far today. And Cleveland looking to take control in the Central against the NFC Central leader, Minnesota, 13-0 in the second quarter. Brian Seip has thrown for a touchdown and run for another. A Jan Stenerud field goal has closed the gap between the Packers and the Oilers. Two minutes to play, first half. Three tight end attack. Calhoun carries, and he is belted at the line of scrimmage and gets nothing. The Shane Kills. Nelson coming up from the inside linebacker spot. Second Bill stuffed them. When they get down there, they get very tough. It's going to be interesting, though, to see what they do, whether the Pats keep the ball on the ground and go for the field goal or whether they take a couple of shots and throw the ball into the end zone. I think they should put the ball in the air because I think they need to have a commanding lead going into half other than just a 10-point lead. Three tight ends with Bill Lankaitis back in at center. Pete Brock, normally a center, playing in the slot as a tight end with Francis and Hasselback. The running backs are Ferguson and Mosi Tatupu. Fake to Tatupu. Kavanaugh will throw. Lobbing to the end zone. Touchdown, Russ Francis. He beat Charles Rose and beat him big. What happened is that they faked the run. Francis blocked down, then released and came all the way across the field. Utilized his height and his speed. Let's take a look. Francis, good, good move. You see that fake to his right, coming back across to his left. Beats Charles Rome by two or three yards. Wide open. Takes the hand. Looks like they do it every week. Made it look easy, didn't he? Seventh touchdown reception of the season for Russ Francis. Kavanaugh will hold. Smith, who hasn't missed a point after try all season, will try and make it 45 in a row this year. Perfect. A minute and 15 seconds to play in the first half, and the Patriots are very much alive in the AFC East. She's young, she's pretty, she's full of laughter. Sharon Eisenhower of North Tonawanda, New York. The hard reality is that Sharon has crippling arthritis, a disease that affects over 31 million people in America. 
Hi, I'm Joe Ferguson of the Buffalo Bills on an outing at the Buffalo Zoo with some of the children from the Arthritis Foundation here in Buffalo. All over America, the United Way supports arthritis foundations and clinics so we can help children overcome this disease. Right now, there is no known cure. But we're working for prevention and a cure. And someday, God willing, we'll find them. These children are the reason the United Way exists. Whatever the disease, the United Way wants to bring help and hope to the people everywhere. The United Way works here, and thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. Right, honey? The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. The touchdown toss was the fifth of the season for Matt Cavanaugh. Kubach will kick it off. Because of the wind, they had to hold it for him. They kick it short. Taken by one of the up men out across the 25-yard line. And the Patriots are down quickly on the coverage. The tackle is made by reserve linebacker Bill Matthews, number 53. The ball was returned by Chris Keating, one of Buffalo's backup linebackers, number 52. So they took no chances. Didn't want Hooks or Brown to handle the ball. Manucci is three of four since Ferguson went out with the injured ankle. 40 yards net passing. He's also been sacked a couple of times. On another occasion, he took off for a first down run. Curtis Brown carries. He's out to the 30-yard line. Second down and seven coming up with exactly a minute to play until halftime. And Buffalo apparently not very interested in stopping the clock, although they do have all three of their timeouts remaining. It took the Patriots 15 plays to go 80 yards. They kept the ball almost seven minutes before Kavanaugh hit Francis in the end zone. I think what Buffalo wants to do is to go into the locker room. I think they may have to redesign their game plan somewhat, except for a play like this. Here's Joe Cribbs. Cribbs rambling into ball. New England territory. Did the fumble come after the whistle? No. The Patriots have the ball. Rod Schote makes the fumble recovery number 56. Mentioned at the top of the game, the breaks seem to be going towards New England, just the opposite of what happened in their first meeting. This is the perfect example. Cribs breaks loose. They get into position. Let's take a look at the replay. They're just trying to hold the ball, go in, regroup, breaks loose, gets a good gainer, and what happens? Gets down and he fumbles the ball, lose their chance for a field goal, won't get any points now. Rick Sanford's hit caused the fumble. Joe Cribbs took off on his longest run from scrimmage of the season, but it ends with a fumble recovered by Rod Schott. Now Kavanaugh looking to pad the New England advantage out of the shotgun on first down, goes down. Credit that sack to Ben Williams. Joe Cribbs, if I'm correct, fumbled the ball three times last week. Fumbled again today. Maybe that's an indication that he might be doing too much. Lots of lots of passes. Has run the ball very well. But this is a long season for a rookie who's used to playing 11 games. Now he's playing 20 games. Now the Patriots are not interested in stopping the clock. They too have three timeouts, so Joe Cribbs can breathe a sigh of relief. His fumble did no harm. The clock will run out, and the Patriots are content to take a 14-0 lead into the locker room. The first time the Patriots got the ball, they had it at the 40-yard line of Buffalo. The opening kickoff had bounced over the head of Curtis Brown and gone out of bounds at the two. They punted from out of their own end zone. Pat's got good field position, went 40, scored on the Vegas Ferguson run. Late in the half, they go 80 yards. Kavanaugh to Francis. That's where it is, 14-0, end of the first half. Watch what happens when you make a small investment in a Black & Decker router. Suddenly, things you thought only a professional could do, you can do. It'll shape an edge, decorate, it'll trim a counter, make clean grooves to hold shelves, it'll even write your name. A Black & Decker router can turn something ordinary into something beautiful. And Black & Decker makes a complete line of routers starting at incredibly low prices.
When high interest rates keep America from buying the fuel-efficient cars it needs, it's time to do something about it. Starting now, when you buy a new U.S.-built 81 Chrysler, Plymouth, or Dodge passenger car on credit, you can deduct 6% from the sticker price, including options, because we think the interest rates are 6% too high. That number will move up or down depending on a significant change in the prime interest rate. Make your best deal, then get $325 to $1,000 direct from Chrysler. We'll help you buy the car you want. It's the Bob Hope Christmas Special with Lonnie Anderson, Larry Gatlin, the AP College All-Americans, and Loretta Swit. A Christmas surprise from Ho Ho Ho. Is this part of saving me? Tuesday. Halftime at Chili Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Bob Costas, along with Gene Washington, and the Patriots battling for their lives in the AFC East, lead it by a score of 14 to nothing. If they can win today, and if they can win next week against New Orleans, and Buffalo is upset by San Francisco, the title will belong to the Patriots in the AFC East. Let's go to New York. Here's Bryant Gumbel. I'd like to welcome all of you back to our NFL 80 studios in New York. We're at Sunday number 15 of this NFL season, trying to get you caught up on just what is happening around the league and how it affects the playoff possibilities. Buffalo against New England. Well, the Bills beat the Pats in an earlier meeting under winter conditions at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. Today, they've turned it around, playing at Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, and the Patriots have jumped out to a 14-0 lead. That ball game at the half, Joe Ferguson forced to the sidelines with an injury we now learn to his ankle. As New England got on the board first, before um, Joe Ferguson was hurt. This is Vegas Ferguson of the Patriots going in from nine yards out, 7-0 New England. Dan Minucci is the man who came in at the controls for the Buffalo Bills, but this is the kind of day it's been. Laterals to Cribs, who tries to throw it back to Minucci, who chases it down and winds up scrambling for yardage on his knee. Not the best of days for the Buffalo offense. Matt Cavanaugh in charge of the New England offense, operating from the shotgun here. 25-yard completion to Russ Francis. This gets the Pats in scoring position. Works so well that Kavanaugh went back to the same man, number 81. Touchdown to Francis. Point after has the Patriots out in front of the Bills by a score of 14-0. If the Bills can win this game, they will clinch the title in the AFC East, something they have not done since 1966. In Minnesota, Cleveland against Minnesota, they're the leaders in the, N in the NFC and AFC Central. Both teams could clinch their division titles with a victory today, but Cleveland out in front of the Minnesota Vikings at the half by a score of 13-0. Brian Seip and company looking for their 11th win. Bud Grant and the Vikings looking for their ninth. It was Seip to Calvin Hill. The old-timer out of Yale getting the job done for the Browns here. 18-yard touchdown. Point after put the Browns in front by a score of 7-0. Tommy Kramer and putting the ball in the air an awful lot for the Vikings. Here he completes one number 28, Ahmad Rashad, good for 19 yards, but the Minnesota drive was stymied down near the goal line. Then Brian Seip up top one more time to Dave Logan. 41-yard completion, this one gets the Browns in good scoring position. Logan getting good position on the defender, and then Seip rolling in from touchdown from two yards out, point after was no good. Browns lead the Vikings by a score of 13-0. Again, should either team win, should either team win that ball game, obviously, whichever team wins that ball game will clinch their central division title. Houston against Green Bay. We understand now Houston has just kicked a field goal, gotten a field goal from Chester Markle, who was just signed up this week, now out in front of Green Bay by a score of 9-3 as the first half in that ball game winds down. Houston coming in with a very sound defense, looking for a victory over the Packers. Still, they got some unexpected speed and a long-distance run from Rob Carpenter. Carpenter finding a lot of room down the right sideline, going 46 yards before being pushed out inside the one to set up the game's first score at Lambeau Field. Who else do you call when you've got this man in your backfield? Number 34, Earl Campbell, the NFL's leading rusher, making it look easy from a yard out, taking it in. The point after it was missed, it was 6-0. After 6-3, Markle came in. Field goal for Chester Markle, just signed to replace Tony First this week. Houston out in front of Green Bay, 9-3, as that ball game nears the half. Kansas City against Pittsburgh, two clubs with very, very dim wild card hopes still alive, meeting at Three River Stadium. Pittsburgh out in front of Kansas City by a score of 7-3, that ball game, of course, at the half. Chuck Noll on the sidelines watching his Steelers today. The motto was one for the thumb been a tough goal for the Steelers all year long. Still, they jumped out in front early on. Bradshaw, nine-yard touchdown pass to Lynn Swan, put the Steelers in front by a score of 7-0. But Terry was intercepted by Gary Barbaro, his ninth of the season. That set up a Nick Lowry field goal. 
Brought the Chiefs back. They're only three points of the game. Lowry's field goal of 36 yards has the Chiefs still looking up at a four-point deficit at the half. St. Louis against Philadelphia. The Eagles looking for their 12th win of the season, having a lot of trouble with the Cardinals at Veterans Stadium. That ball game is scoreless at the half. Atlanta against San Francisco. The Falcons have already clinched a playoff position. If they can win today, they will wrap up the title in the NFC West. They are leading the San Francisco 49ers by a score of 7-0. Steve Bartkowski, a one-yard run. The New Orleans Saints, still looking for their first win in this 15th week, are looking up at the Jets right now. Jets out in front by a score of 13-7 at the half. Archie Manning, a 14-yard touchdown pass to Jack Holmes. Kevin Long, a one-yard run for the Jets. They've also got two Pat Leahy field goals, one of 26 yards and one of 47 yards. And Cincinnati out in front of Chicago by a score of 7-0. Last week, you'll remember, the Bears piled up 61 points in the Packers. Well, today they're trailing the Bengals 7-0. Pete Johnson has scored the lone touchdown on a one-yard run. Later today, we've got a very big ball game coming to you from Mile High Stadium in Denver. There, the Oakland Raiders will try to keep pace with the San Diego Chargers as they go against the Denver Broncos. For a preview of that game, we get a report from our John Brody. In Denver's Mile High Stadium, the biggest game of the afternoon, the Denver Broncos and the Oakland Raiders. For Oakland, it means a chance to go on into the playoffs. For Denver, a chance to recuperate a little of their lost pride. I've got with me a man that has been a very instrumental part of the Oakland Raiders throughout the past eight weeks. When their offense has been a little sporadic, their defense has held them together. Cedric Hardman, a man who was on championship teams early, has come on to find new life with the Oakland Raiders. Cedric, what's going on with your defense? Our defense is really playing well, John. We have a coordinator by the name of Charlie Sumner and an outside linebacker by the name of Ted Hendricks that just really put things together. Uh, Charlie has designed a defense where Ted is our Mr. Everything, and he's just roaming all over the field. He's helping us in the pass rush, and he's playing good pass defense. And so, consequently, that's just about sums it up right there. Why? What has Charlie Sumner done? Charlie's kept the defense, which is, could be very complicated, and he's made it real simple. And we're running in a lot of people in different situations, and uh, he's got a pass rushing group, and he's got a group that plays against the run, and everybody just sort of coordinated real well together. Well, you heard it from Cedric Hardman. We'll see him out on the field throughout the afternoon. We're all getting a little excited up here in Denver's Mile High Stadium. The air is thin, but I think the adrenaline is getting a little thinner. All right, thank you, John Brody. That ball game still to come on this doubleheader day on NBC. It's Oakland against Denver. Also another game has Miami's Dolphins going against the Baltimore Colts. I'd like to remind you about a special coming up Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. It's Bob Hope's Christmas special. Bob will be joined by the Associated Press All-America football team. It was a week ago Monday night that John Lennon was shot down out in front of his home on 72nd and Central Park West. As most of you know, a vigil was called for today. A report from Stephen Frazier of NBC News. This is the band shell in New York City's Central Park, where admirers of John Lennon gathered for a final tribute to him. They listened to his music for 30 minutes and tried to stay warm in the cold here. Then precisely at 2 o'clock, the music stopped and the crowd grew silent for 10 minutes of silence in his memory. The observance took place within sight of the Dakota, Lennon's home in New York, where his wife and son have remained since his death. Similar gatherings were scheduled around the world with no speeches or eulogies, simply 10 minutes of prayer and silence at the request of Yoko Ono, Lennon's wife. Central Park, Stephen Frazier, NBC News.